morning and welcome to uh, our Woodbridge virtual service. It's a little bit cooler now, but a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, I have only one notice to give you and that uh, uh, coming up at the end of September will be a deanery wide Bible study, uh, which uh, will be, uh, I think, centered from Malmesbury Abbey. Uh, which everybody uh, is free to join in. Uh, so look out for emails and flyers about this uh, during this month. Grace, mercy and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to begin this morning with a prayer uh, in the words of Psalm 119 verses 33 to 40. So let us pray. Teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees, that I may follow it to the end. Give me understanding, so that I may keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart toward your statutes, and not toward selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Fulfill your promise to your servant, so that you may be feared. Take away the disgrace I dread, for your laws are good. How I long for your precepts in your righteousness preserve my life amen our first hymn this morning is well known be thou my vision o lord of my heart Yeah. 
come now to our prayers of confession. In God's holy presence, we call to mind our many sins. Let us join together in this prayer. Father, our sin has brought you sorrow, has harmed those who share our life, and has been hurtful to ourselves. We dare not say that we have only lightly sinned, yet Christ has taken to himself the burden of it all. In your mercy, forgive our past sins, amend what we are, and direct what we shall be. In the name of Christ. Amen. Hear God's word of grace and the assurance of pardon. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Our sins are forgiven for his sake. Amen. The collect for the 13th Sunday of Trinity, the prayer for the day. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself. Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This morning we have uh, three short Bible readings. Uh, will be read to us by Zoe and Ed Rawlings and by Matt. And we thank you all to uh, them for, for doing this. So let us uh, follow these readings uh, just now. It's from Ezekiel 33, verses 7 to 11. Yeah. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you wicked person, you will surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade them from their ways, that wicked person will die for their sin, and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person to turn from their ways, and they do not do so, they will die for their sin, though you yourself will be saved." Son of man, say to the Israelites, this is what you are saying. Our offences and sins weigh us down, and we are wasting away because of them. How can we live, say to, I say to them. Say to them, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? The reading is taken from Romans 13, verses 8 to 14. Love fulfills the law. Let no doubt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this one command, love your neighbour as yourself. Love does not harm, does no harm to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilment of the law. And do this, understand the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when he was first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carouselling and drunkenness, not in sexual immora immorality and debauchery, not in 
dissension and jealousy. Gather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Matthew chapter 18, starting at verse 15. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. This is the word of the Lord. We're going to sing again. Our next hymn is Be Still for the Presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. word to us this morning. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, give us the faith to receive your word, the understanding to know what it means, and the courage to put it into practice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Each week, the Church of England sets out a plan of recommended Bible readings so that every four years, the whole Bible is covered in scope and doctrine. As I read through today's chosen readings from Ezekiel 33, Psalm 119, 
Romans 13 and Matthew 18, one word and theme stand out to me. It is the word turn. God tells Ezekiel to say to the people, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they should turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? Psalm 119 says, direct me in the path of your commands. Turn my heart towards your statutes. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. And in Matthew chapter 18, Jesus advises on how we should try to turn an errant church member from their sin. And then in Romans chapter 13, Paul points out the right direction to go. To love your neighbor as yourself, for love is the fulfillment of the law. I can well remember when Satnav was first introduced to cars. A colleague brought a new Volvo with one, and it was a source of great interest. Now we nearly all have Satnavs in our cars. Mine tells me which direction and which roads to take. If I take a wrong turning and go off route, I get a warning on the screen of a flashing U-turn. Till I have turned back. In John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, Christian and hopeful, heading for the celestial city, come to a place where the road divided, but both roads were parallel and they were unsure which way to take. A man asked them why they were standing there. They told him that they were going to the celestial city. The man said, follow me, for that is where I am going. They followed down the road that the man led. But gradually, the road, by degrees, turned them so far from the city that they desired to go to, that in a little time their faces were turned away from the city, yet they continued to follow the man. By and by, before they were aware, he led them both within the compass of a net in which they were both so entangled that they could not get themselves out. They needed to be rescued from their plight. They had failed to heed the warning of following this man. Neither did they refer to the map that had been given to them of the way that they should go. So we come to uh, Ezekiel, one of the prophets. A prophet's function was, included three main things. The first was to analyze the shape of evil in a society. The second was to proclaim God's message for the present and sometimes for the future. And thirdly, they were to intercede for God's people. God called Ezekiel to be a watchman, usually one who forms the rampart, one who from the ramparts would spot oncoming danger and attack and give warning with a trumpet. Here, however, Ezekiel is called to give warning of coming judgment for his people's own offenses and sins. And his serious responsibility to do this is outlined. We cannot avoid the fact of judgment of sin by God, but the Old and New Testaments alike, including the words of Jesus, leave us in no doubt. We deal with a holy God, and yet a loving God who takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. The sad thing is that people, despite being warned to turn from their sinful ways, 
do not do so. They say, you turn if you wish, I'm not for turning. A stubborn, obstinate, proud, and unbelieving reaction to God, our Father, who loves us. So God says to us again, turn, turn from your sinful ways. Why will you die? When we look at Psalm 119, uh, in the prayer that we joined in to begin with this morning, it's the prayer of a person who wishes to turn and get back on the right track. Teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees. Give me understanding so that I may keep your law. Direct me in the path of your commands. And what is more is that they are in dead earnest about their request. They wish to follow God's decrees to the end. They want to obey his laws with all their heart and find delight in his commands. They ask that their heart will be turned away from selfish gain and that their eyes will be turned from worthless things. It is from our heart that our motives and desires come to put ourselves first for selfish gain. The entrance to our hearts is often through the eyes and worthless things can take hold. In each of us, there is a battle going on between good and evil, between light and dark, God's way and the world's way of Jesus himself and the forces opposing him. Our hearts can either be in the dark or in the light. There is a story of a grandfather teaching his grandson. You have two dogs inside you, says the grandfather. A dark one, and they are always fighting. Which one will win? asks the boy. The one you feed, says the grandfather. We need to take care about feeding those inner dogs. What on the internet or in books or lifestyle magazines do our eyes feast upon? It is not just the young who need this advice, but as we get older, these dogs often get stronger and the desire for selfish gain often increases. We feed the inner light by focusing our minds on goodness, righteousness, and truth. Preserve my life. Fulfill your promise. Take away the disgrace I dread. I long for your righteousness, praise the psalmist. And then our reading in Matthew chapter 18 tells of Jesus' teaching about trying to turn the errant church member from their sin. Maybe they listened to the wrong people and ignored scripture. It reminds us that like Christian and hopeful, a church member can be slowly led away till facing the wrong direction. They need to be turned back, but be gentle and empathetic. And then in our reading from Romans chapter 13, Paul speaks of the right way. Here is God's map and compass. When, as we have seen, the psalmist prays, give me understanding so that I may keep your law and obey it. Paul explains that the law is kept or fulfilled by loving others. Jesus said that he had come to fulfill the law. He did so by a love that gave himself for the sins of the world. Paul says, love your neighbor as yourself, because love 
is the fulfillment of the law. And do this, he says, do it, just do it, because the time is short. Our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Night is nearly over. The day is almost here. But Paul goes on and he says, so let us put aside the deeds of darkness. Let us not feed the dark dog, but turn and put on the armor of light. And let us fulfill God's law. Amen. And so we come now to our intercessions. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you in the assurance that you are present with us now. Help us in these moments of prayer to know that we are speaking to one who is near and not far off, whose love is all around us and who knows our every need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for the nations. O oh Lord, you have established the nations and they are spread around the world. To one as mighty as you, they are like drops in a bucket. You raise up one and put down another. But you love each individual and family. And it must pain your heart when wars and strife and disharmony occur. We pray for international relations. And that as your creation, we will treasure and care for the world you have created. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer in a time of crisis. Merciful Lord and Father, in your great faithfulness, look now in compassion on us and on all your, your human creation. Deliver us from affliction, we pray, and lift our hearts to trust in you. Holy God, please bless us and all people as we turn to you in faith and awe. Delight in your commands and walk once again in your ways to the praise and glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for our queen and government. We give thanks for our queen and for her influence for peace during her reign. We thank you for her witness to Christ and to Christian virtues. As her ministers have succeeded each other, we pray for their commitment to peaceful rule and to justice and fairness for all, that all may share our nation's values and prosperity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray today for children. Jesus, friend of children, we bring them now to you. In a time of unusual and difficult circumstances, look on them with compassion and love. We pray that they may have caring homes and families. And where there is stress, poverty or division, we pray for protection and for all those who seek to bring help and relief. We pray especially for return to schooling and education, that none will miss out or suffer as a result of the present pandemic. We pray for their safety and their ongoing development to maturity. We pray for their teachers and other staff as they navigate the difficult waters of infection protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for the church, we pray for the ongoing witness and work of your church as it adapts to new circumstances and challenges. Give wisdom and vision to all ministers, pastors and laypersons, that the love of Christ will shine even brighter in these days. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. And for those who are ill, remember in mercy, our Father, those who are passing through illness, especially those we know. Bless all that is being done for their good and surround them with your healing love and power for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you have made us watchmen for those around us. Make us influences for light and for good to tell them of the love and saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that there will be many who turn to Christ in these last days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And together we join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. to you again 
and turn our eyes to behold your wondrous mercy, grace, and love towards us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us in our hearts and in our homes, both now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.